podcast do we this here we go corgi music you ready <laughs> Oh, he's cute. Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Talington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. And uh, after being 77 here yesterday, where we had two walks because it was just so beautiful out, it is going to be about 33 here all day. And it just so happens that today is the day I'm going off to Eastern Mass to treat a bunch of horses using craniosacral therapy, um, orthopedic manipulation, maybe some emotion code work and some energy work and chakra clearing. So it's going to be a busy afternoon for me while it's snowing, sleeting, icing, etc. outside. I think I'll get to Boston without too much weather, but I think the trip home will be a bit dicey, especially without my beloved pickup trucks that have driven me all over for 30 or 40 years. But my car's doing pretty well in the snow. I have to say I'm impressed. A Buick is a truck in a car suit. (laughs) So today, hi Danny, I know it's really cold where you are, saw that on the weather. it, we are going to talk today about something that came up this weekend. We did a little talk about um, in that International Random Acts of Kindness Day. And lo and behold, that afternoon in the mail, I received a very special letter. And it's just amazing. I don't think the person purposefully sent it to arrive that day at all. It's just about a year since I met the person. And I think that's really where they were coming from. And it just reminded me of uh, that word serendipity. You know, it's a nice name for a gift store (laughs) or a horse. But what serendipity really is, is when something unexpected happens, that is exactly the right thing that you need to happen. For instance, uh, you're making a choice between two houses to buy and you just don't have the money for the one you really want. And oh, lo and behold, the price drops so that you can afford it. Or you're walking down the street thinking, boy, what I really need for this event coming up is this particular outfit. And you go in a store randomly and there's exactly what you need in your price range. And I've had this happen to me so many times. Um, Even when I was looking for um, a jacket to wear the TED Talk (laughs) that I did, I went to a couple of stores and things were just not quite right. And on the way home, there was a big car accident in the road and I had to go around a way I don't usually drive and I walked into um, a Talbot store and the first jacket I looked at when I came in was exactly what I needed. And so again, serendipity, it was a miracle. And so this person's letter arrived on International Random Acts of Kindness Day. And it's a really interest. it's a beautiful card with flowers. And it's really interesting that her card itself is an act of kindness thanking me for an act of kindness that I did for her. So I don't know, I want to protect her privacy, but I'll read you parts of it and give you the basic gist of it. She says, Dear Sally, a year ago this March, I called you in great distress as my kitty, a black and white tuxedo, is very ill with a high fever and at the kitty ICU at the emergency animal hospital up this road from me here. We talked and you gave me the names of two people who have been very helpful, a veterinarian in Holyoke and an animal communicator. I want to thank you for helping me to connect with these generous, wise, and insightful animal lovers. The veterinarian, whose name I can't recall, helped me come to terms with my cat's condition, as did the animal communicator. After 72 hours of IV antibiotics and fluids and an occasional nibble of his dry cat food, my cat... Interruption by the phone. (laughs) I brought the cat home, took a day off from work, and just spent time with him. And then on March 12th, which is my dad's birthday and very close to my own birthday, um, the cat passed away with the help of euthanasia medication. And this is really 
an ideal hospice kind of care for an animal when they're crossing the Rainbow Bridge. So to be able to have them home and have someone come to your home to put them down. We have a few vets around here that will do that even if you're not their regular client. So what a lovely thing for this woman to have connected with someone to do that. My cat was truly suffering and he had fluid in his abdominal cavity but in his chest it was hard for him to breathe and I later had him cremated at White Rose in Vermont which is where I brought my beloved Comet and it is a place I highly recommend. The people are just so wonderful there and they have so many nice memorial items for you to get for your animal and it's so hard. I mean sometimes it's better to do this before they're gone to get some paw prints made, collect some hair, take lots of pictures of your pet especially if he's a senior and just do wonderful things to connect with him and today I actually had the idea that as I'm stripping much fuzz out of my corgi that what I might want to do is make that hair into the shape of a corgi on like a shadow box picture frame or even a flat one and then do a little painting in addition and Darnell Collins if you're listening I know you can do this with some of Dixie's hair and make like a little portrait of my dog using my dog's hair. So those are some of the things you can do. And White Rose, they took hair from my dog. They gave me um, a beautiful rose to remember him by. And they also did the paw prints. And they, I had a special necklace that I wanted some of his hair in. And some people put cremains in there. I can't do that. I like to keep my animals all together. So anyway, this person brought her cat to White Rose, which she also recommends. And I may well have told her about them, and certainly this vet in Holyoke would have. She says, throughout all of this, the animal communicator was my rock, and then we have become friends. She often gave me messages from my cat, and the cat is now one of my animal spirit guides and very wise. And this is so true for so many of us that lose a special animal. They come back and help us so much in our lives in ways we can't even imagine. She took an animal communicator class with this person and has started her own work communicating with animals. And sometimes this is all because we have that connection with the one animal that crossed the Rainbow Bridge who can help us reach the animals on the other side. And I've told this story many times, but when I was working with a horse who was crossing the Rainbow Bridge, uh, my friend Tracy in Colorado and I were on the phone and we were calling in the ancestral herd of all the horses we knew across the Rainbow Bridge and he was whinnying and greeting each one. So in that moment, um, you know, the horses from the other side were really communicating with us to communicate with the horse that was crossing the Rainbow Bridge. So it's not uncommon after you lose an animal to have heightened sensitivity to your abilities as an animal communicator. And this wonderful person is one of many who after losing an animal uh, becomes an animal communicator. She says that she's also um, uh, undergoing her own unexpected journey with a life-threatening illness um, since June and that she is uh, wrapping up some of the treatment for all of that. And then again, this animal communicator I connected her with has been one of her most supportive cheerleaders and has also put her in contact with uh, a medical intuitive, which again is a wonderful thing. And in fact, she doesn't know this because I haven't reached out to her, but the animal, I mean the uh, medical intuitive that she's working with is somebody that I know and I've also connected other people with. She says, thank you for helping me so much on that fateful evening. I am truly grateful. Hugs. And then it's from this person who had the tuxedo kitty. So you just never know when you've touched someone's life in a deep way. And I don't think I ever even saw that cat. I think I just talked to her on the phone because the cat was in the ICU. And at any other facility in the area, I've been allowed to go in and work with them. Um, and people have been that work there, vets and vet techs, have been shocked at the improvements animals have made after I've worked with them. Um, but I have not worked on an animal in that ICU um, in many years, and they've got all new staff there, so I don't even know how easy that would be. I think if it was my own animal, I could, but I don't know. We'll see when that day comes. So you just never know when you've touched someone's life really deeply. I know another person I've worked with when their animal was crossing the Rainbow Bridge has said to me, actually several, many, more than I can count, people have said to me, your words that day were such a comfort and just kept me on a spiritual journey 
um, with my animal from beginning to the end and the beyond that because our ability to connect with them needs to be validated. I don't think we know enough um, to know where they go or where they are, but we can feel them. We can feel their presence. You know that I've talked about Comet barking after he was across the Rainbow Bridge and Tristan and I both being able to hear him in the house. So it's just really important to support people in this process. And after receiving this letter, I thought, you know, why, what am I waiting for? I am going to be working on a book about animals, hospice care, and crossing the Rainbow Bridge with stories from people about their own experiences and then some of my own comments and stories uh, sprinkled through. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should start working on that now and just put this other project I have uh, that's been a slow slog, put it aside because I just keep getting more and more messages, serendipity <laughs> from the universe telling me that this is something I, I need to give to the world. So more on that later. We'll see if I get that project underway. I mean, it is underway. I just haven't, I've been trying to finish up this other small book. So maybe that other book will uh, magically appear in the next couple of months and then I'll be on my way with this Animals Crossing book. So thanks for joining us today. And you know, those random acts of kindness that we talked about over the weekend, leaving sticky notes on people's cars and things, you just never know. When somebody's lost a job or had some trouble at home and you leave a note saying, you know, find a smile today. You know, go home and watch a funny movie. Um, remember the scene when Lucy and Ethel are packing um, chocolates and they're eating them and stuffing them in their shirts and hats. You know, stuff like that brings people a smile and you just never know when it's going to be a good thing in somebody's life. Another friend of mine was in a grave medical condition and not really addressing it personally. And she got into an altercation with somebody and the police came and an ambulance came and she was a little roughed up and so was the other person. They went to the hospital and uh, my friend was actually able to be put on um, some antibiotics and things and other medication and suddenly made a remarkable recovery from kind of a dire circumstance. And it was something she wouldn't have sought out on her own, but what seemed like a bad incident fighting with somebody over a parking lot situation <laughs> turned out to be kind of life-saving. And she's contributed so much to the world in the last 20 years since that event. So many things in the world that seem, um, not necessarily good at the time turn out to be a good thing and one of my other projects this week is I'm working on a story for um, a storytelling slam about silver linings and I'm pretty excited to be doing this and I just hope I get it done but it's only a short thing but I hope I get it wrapped up this weekend so Tristan is going to stay home he is not coming to Eastern Mass in the snow with the mummy today what do you think about that you could come, but you'd be in the car and it'd be cold. So he's going to stay here and take care of the house while I'm off to Eastern Mass. So hopefully uh, you can take some time today and think about somebody who's made a difference in your life and think about sending them a note or making them a phone call or even sending them something like some flowers or I don't know, some memento. I have a friend in New Jersey who I've had for 40 years and every once in a while she'll be cleaning out stuff and she'll find some random art project from when she was 23 and she'll just mail it to me as a gift and it always makes me smile those things are so precious i have them stored in various places in the house and um, it brings back our younger years and um, our connection for all that time so write a thank you note to someone who you're grateful to Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Conversations with a Corgi. Probably we'll talk about whatever interesting thing goes on with these horses later. We haven't got our music. Where'd it go? What do you think, Tris? I think we'll make it to Boston with no precipitation, but the trip home could be snowy. <laughs> Better than icy. Very grateful for snow, not ice. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.
We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody have a great day. Stay safe. <laughs>